welcome to another episode of uh, New Energy Revolution. Um, this week we're in uh, Istanbul for the conference, uh, Intersolar Conference here in Turkey. And I've got with me Marcus Elsassi, he's the CEO of Solar Promotion, who's uh, putting on this conference. So uh, great to have you, Marcus. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, we've been listening this morning to some of the speakers in Turkey and, and on a very Turkey-centric um, approach, so I'll come to that in a minute. But really I want viewers to understand a bit about you and your story, if that's okay. So. Um, you know, how did you break into the solar industry? What was your major inspiration or opportunity, and how has that developed to where you are now? Yeah, so it was quite a long time ago when I started um, to enter the the solar industry. It was actually caused by a nuclear accident we experienced in in Europe in 1986 uh, yeah. with uh, the Chernobyl uh, accident. And uh, at that time, I was still in school. I was about 16 or 17 years old, and mm -hmm. uh, we really experienced <coughs> the how uh, the failure of a nuclear reactor can um, um, yeah, affect your, your personal life. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, this reactor was uh, about 1,500 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. So um, it was uh, very shocking uh, at that time to see uh, that um, the agricultural sector was suffering. We had a, a fallout due to the rain at that time, mm -hmm. a nuclear fallout in Germany. In Germany, yeah. yeah. And um, <clears throat> so they, they had to destroy their harvest uh, at that time. And uh, we are still today, um, uh, almost 30 years later, we have... Um, Repeating the same thing. We have, uh, we have things like this, if you collect mm. mushrooms uh, mm. in the wood or uh, if you eat wild uh, uh, game meat, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> uh, you still have to um, yeah, uh, watch the um, uh, radio... Uh, in Germany today? In Germany today, yeah. Wow. So it, this, this showed me at that time uh, what influence the um, electricity generation can have mm. uh, on your personal life. And this was the time I was uh, thinking about um, the sustainable energy uh, production. And uh, at that time, um, I founded a, a locally um, um, environmental group to work on these uh, topics. And then we started our first solar conference, 1991. So that's how, how all started. And, wow. uh, today we are... Um, globally active with um, on, on several continents with our events, uh, our conferences, our exhibitions, to promote um, the vision of uh, yeah, solar energy, uh, sustainable energy supply. Uh, yeah. Wow! And so, so you're driven by that, so that need for you saw, and like you see today, we're having the same problem maybe with Fukushima with the thing repeating where you know there's just not enough alternative energy sources. So again, people are driving to nuclear. And it's not necessarily the most stable or safe uh, energy source either. So yeah. that's that's, right. uh, yeah. that's quite scary. Um, so so where do you see the sort of you know the conferences you said you've been doing it for twenty years? They've been developing for twenty years. What's your sort of mission or purpose? Where do you want to lead it? Where do you see it going? And, and why do you keep doing it? I mean, our <clears throat> our vision is to to really have a, um, um, an energy supply which is sustainable, which is. Um, um, yeah, mainly uh, the production uh, mainly based on renewables, um, and this will probably be, be um, uh, solar and wind, um, mm -hmm. most mostly, and um, that's where, where we are uh, working for. I thought it was quite funny. We were having a solar conference today, and when I came out my room, it was snowing today. Mm -hmm. Coming to the conference, so most people may not think Turkey is an ideal, uh, you know, location for mm -hmm. for solar. But I heard you saying earlier that actually there's more solar radiation in Turkey than Germany. Absolutely, yeah. So maybe you could tell us a bit about that. How, do, how does that work? How do you... Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, so, uh, Turkey especially has a huge potential and it's widely untapped at the moment um, for solar. <coughs> um, uh, Turkey only has um, 54 megawatts of installation uh, mm -hmm. um, until now. And uh, Germany has um, 38 uh, gigawatts of installation. And, uh, it's not even 1 percent, it's less than 1 percent yeah, or something. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, 6, uh, um, yeah, six, six uh, uh, percent or 7 percent of the electricity um, the consumption in Germany is, is uh, produced uh, from PV. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, uh, this shows, I mean, we have 60 percent less irradiation in, in, in Germany than in Turkey. So this shows the potential. And um, so therefore, that's one of the reasons uh, why we are here uh, to promote uh, the use of, of solar to yeah, exchange experiences from, from um, other countries um, uh, because it's not only Germany, I mean, there are a lot of, of countries like Italy, Spain mm. having 6 to 7 percent of their electricity coming from, from PV. California will probably reach this year 10 percent. Wow. So um, it's a, yeah, a, a huge potential and, and, and um, I'm very optimistic that, that uh, we'll see a lot of installations in Turkey in the future. And some of the challenges that we've been hearing about today has been things like um, 
PV competitiveness and grid parity. Obviously, um, it's going to be different for every country, but do you think there's like a good model we should follow? Because we see there's a lot of problems in Turkey, for example, with the bureaucracy, with the licensing. There's a lot of confusion for you know investors, for entrepreneurs coming to the market. How is Germany doing that differently? Are they doing it better? Have you seen any other sort of examples or models that we you know we should follow? I mean, uh, Turkey definitely has uh, at the moment um, has uh, has an issue with. Um, with the bureaucracy, it takes a lot of time to get the project um, online, uh, so you need.